Good morning, everybody. I hope this day finds you all doing well. This morning when I was praying and then after reading the Word of God, both times during prayer and when I was reading the Word of God, I felt like heavy in the Spirit. I, it's almost like I felt the Holy Spirit grieving with what's going on right now around the world. Not just in America, but around the world. The devil wants the whole world. He wants every nation. He's got his finger in every cookie jar. So I just want to encourage all of you believers. Please, I beg you, stay in the Word. Allow the Word of God to speak to you and transform you in such a time as this. Putting on the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, Jesus the Christ. Because with what's coming, you're going to need that. I hope you are taking it serious. <laughs> I'm not trying to shove it down your throat. But with what I'm feeling, what is coming in the spirit realm, it's very urgent, guys, that we get into the Word and we're prepared for the days ahead. There's so much happening that Jesus talked about in Matthew 24. The signs of the time of the end. And I know there are some of you that always say, we've always heard that. Well, the end times, the end times started 2,000 years ago when Jesus died on the cross, was buried, and rose again on the third day. That's when the end times started. Now we're just much closer. Before you say, oh, Eli, what are you talking about? It's just a myth. We've always heard that. Just remember, God said 1,000 years is like one day, and one day is like 1,000 years. We are seeing so much prophetic things happening on the biblical time frame that is that the Bible says we're going to see in the time of the end. I mean, you look around and see, you see the waters rising. I know a lot of people called me crazy when I shared that video back in January where some of the modern-day prophets uh, were talking about these storms that are going to hit every, every side of the America. All of the waters rising, the storms, the hurricanes, everything that will increase, the wildfires, all of that stuff they talked about. Um, we're seeing it. We're seeing the wars also that Jesus talked about in Matthew 24. We're seeing all of the birth pangs that Jesus talked about that we will see are happening everywhere around the world. Look, look at the concerning Israel's the biggest one for me. You look at God's precious land, Israel, Jerusalem. The devil is trying to destroy them. The devil is trying to use other nations and other cultures to make them look like the bad person, the bad nation. When they are so innocent, they were the ones attacked first more than a, about a year ago now. But guys, if you look at what's happening and if you're in the word of God, then you'll know. See, a lot of people that blame Israel, a lot of people that blame God for all this stuff. The Bible says my people perish due to lack of knowledge. If you put on the knowledge of God and read the word of God... You're going to know what I'm talking about. You're going to know the season that we're in and why things are unfolding in the Middle East right now the way they are. So guys, Jesus tells us to look for the season. We do not know the day or the hour that Jesus is going to return. That's going to happen. It could happen at any time because we're seeing so much prophetic, biblical prophecy unfolding. Click, click. And just one after another, one after another, one after another. It's so fast Back in the 50s, 40s, and 50s, there's here and there prophetic things happening. Now in 2024, it's every day. It's not monthly or yearly anymore. It's every single day. It is absolutely stunning to me when I'm in the Word of God and I can verify the times that we live in. And then Jesus says, when you see these things happening, look up. Your redemption draws nigh. Jesus the Redeemer. He's coming back. Ephesians 1, 7, and 8. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavishes on us. This is beautiful. Hebrews 4, verse 16. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Right now is the time we need to draw near to the, to the throne of grace and allow God to have all of us. Let the old pass away. Let the new in Christ come because we, are, we don't want to be the five foolish virgins the Bible talks about. We want to be the five wise that keep oil in our lamps. What's the oil? The Holy Spirit must be born again. Put on the word of God, the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. Because if we are caught off guard, it's like a thief in the night. We're caught off guard. Those that are born again will go home with Jesus and meet him in the air. The dead in Christ shall rise first and those who remain shall be caught up in, with the Lord in the air, in the clouds. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. And then Hebrews 11, verse 6 says, 
Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who draws near to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. Guys, I'm not going to uh, go in all of what I know with politics and what's going on around the world. It causes a lot of fear. So I'm going to stay away from that, but I'm going to go this route right here. That if you confess with your mouth, this is Romans 10, 9. That if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. If you do that, you're going to be prepared and ready. If you're born again, you put on the word, you put on the living water. You're born again with God's Holy Spirit. Just the way Jesus told the re very religious Pharisee, Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto you. Because he was already being doing all the re religious rituals and traditions, going to church every Sunday, keeping the Sabbath law, all of that stuff they were already doing. They were living the word of God. And he, they failed to have a relationship. And he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, unless you're born again, you will never see the kingdom of God. That's what applies today. Verily, verily, Jesus says to all of you watching, you must be born again with his spirit of love, fruits of his spirit. Have Jesus abiding in you, John 15, and you abide in Christ, have a rel personal relationship with him, and then you can do all things. But if you do not abide in him and you're in religion, then you can do nothing, it says. And if, it says if you are in him and he abides in you, then he prunes you. He prunes you as you're daily in the word. I'm talking daily. No, don't, don't, do not be distracted. Please be daily in the word and not daily on social media. Daily believing the media's lies. Daily being distracted by what you're seeing on social media, Facebook, TikTok, all of that stuff. Because that is used by the enemy to distract you. But if you're daily in the word, that's why I'm taking this route rather than the fear route of what's coming. I know what's coming. E even me, myself, with I, what I know is coming, it can be fearful. God says in 1 Timothy 1, 7, I do not give you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I'm getting ready to wrap this up. Now I'll call him back. Power and of love and of a sound mind. So check this out. I'm going to wrap it up with 2 Corinthians 3. There are so many things that can veil us. Do not allow anything to veil you. Be in the word. Because it says this in verse 15. Yes, even today when the law is read, religion... Their hearts are covered with a veil, and they do not understand. See, Jesus told, told the religious hypocrites in Mark 4, 11, he says, the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you. He, he was the secret. He was standing right in front of them, and they missed it because they had so much, so much religion. You must go to church every Sunday. You must keep the Sabbath law because that's what they were doing at that time. They, they missed. See, Jesus was prophesied throughout the entire Old Testament. And when he came, they themselves that were keeping the law, keeping the Old Testament, missed him even though he was right before their eyes. Because they, their, their uh, traditions and rituals and religion was more important than the truth. That's why they missed him. He was standing before them and said in Mark 4.11, The secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but those who are outside, all things come in parables. Then he spoke in parables so they'd receive it, and they still wouldn't receive it. Then he said, they are hearing but not understanding, seeing but not perceiving, lest they turn and be forgiven. But if they don't turn from religion, he cannot forgive them. Because Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by him. Oh, but, verse 16, but whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. For the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there's Freedom! Freedom! Wow, freedom, forgiveness, salvation. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord who is the Spirit makes us more and more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image. <laughs> that, make, that just gives me chills everywhere. We get more and more, we become like Him. Focus on Jesus, you become more like Jesus. You focus on social media, you become, become more like the lies and deception of the enemy. You focus more on social media and religion, you're going to become more like it. But if you focus on Jesus the Christ, you will become, become more like Jesus the Christ. You'll find your image and your identity in Christ. And then on that day, when He appears through those clouds, you're going home with Him because you were not distracted. You were not a foolish one. You, had, you were wise 
and had oil in your lamp, this oil in your lamp, and went home to be with Jesus forever and ever and ever.